Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and we're playing as the Cree, it's A to Z and boy, have I got a game for you today. Before we get into the details, thank you all channel supporters for providing this idea to me. If you fancy joining in on the planning of the A to Z series, don't forget you can find me on Coffee and Patreon where all the channel supporters live. But let me show you what's going on today. What's that? There's a lot of people here. What's that? This start is very weird with a sort of top left in the, like limitation on the map yes this is indeed a tsl game that's right tree start location has made its way into the a to z series and about time i hear you say this is of course one of our, our favorite favorite map makers maps saf hello saf you're amazing specifically today we're playing saf's atlantic a clash of worlds the map effectively is north america south america europe and africa but the Atlantic has kind of been almost removed and the continents squished together. So what we've got is a lot of American civs and a lot of European and African civs all right next to each other. Who will win? Well, we shall find out because today we're going to be playing the Cree in a sort of quite Cree friendly way. Now the Cree are all about favorable terms and alliances. We love alliances. Alliances provide shared visibility. They're all really cool. However, these American lands have invaders somewhere. We have civilizations like America and Canada, let alone all of the European civs like Spain and Portugal and France and, oh no, not the English. Ugh. Our aim is to unite of the Americas with the native civilizations as provided by Civ 6. Somewhere on this map we have the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incans, Mapuche. What I'm going to be aiming to do is form alliances with all of those civilizations to drive out civs like America, Canada, England, France, anyone else who tries to settle onto the American maps. Like I think this should be a quite good way. So lots of war but also lots of peace and alliances. We're going to be blending these favorable terms with some quite aggressive play. And the Cree have a lot of extra fun things that we can do, extra trade routes, claiming tiles as traders move out within three tiles of land. A unique scout that starts with more strength and a free promotion as well as the Makoap, I think. I can never pronounce Cree names, I'm so sorry, but our unique improvement. Basically, it's like a mine, but it provides gold and housing as well. Not quite as much production as you go through the game, but it's, it's really cool. Extra production, extra housing. Towards the late stages of the game, one of these improvements provides two housing. So the size of cities you can get is amazing. We also are going to be looking out for anything that gives camps or pastures. So anything with camps or pastures is a really good thing because they will improve my food trade routes and gold routes as well. Who knows, once we've unified America, perhaps we'll even go into Europe. But before we can do that, we have to look at our start, which is an absolute mess. Unfortunately, we start kind of in Canada, right at the edge of the map, and it's cold here. We have a little bit of dry land, but lots of lakes. Lots of tundra. It's a very weird start. To help me with this start, we have a few mods on today. I am playing with the Secret Society's Knights of Solomon because I really fancied a bit of a religious game and this combines war and religion really, really well. If you haven't seen my Scottish playthrough where we whipped the knights out, I'd go and have a look at that. It was really good fun. I also have Religion Expanded, a very fun mod which adds more religions and more beliefs into the game for religion. Really handy when you're playing large maps with 25 players in this case because there aren't enough pantheons and this adds a lot of pantheons. We've got Historical Religions on. That's quite fun. And the map is Deity, Standard Speed, Barb Clans, Heroes and Legends, Secret Societies all on. Looking at my start location, I have a Plains Hill and there's no other real crazy tiles around me that I'm looking at going like, ooh, these are really, really needed to go. There's a luxury down here with gypsum, but I'm not going to just move into the tundra without reason. There's fresh water on this tile. I have access to a 2-1 tile, but soon to be a 4 food tile. We've got some wheat over here. It's not a good start, being honest, but it's also not a bad start. So I'm just going to settle in place and hope we can build out from here. Now, first thing I want to do is build my unique scout. This thing is very strong. It has 20 strength, I believe. Yes, and with one promotion, we can actually get it promoted twice more to give it the 
ambush quality which makes it into a 40 strength unit. A very useful thing early stages of the game. I'm also, as fun as it would be to get my unique improvement first off, I'm actually going to get astrology. We're going to be rushing a religion and if I can get Feed the World today, I will because with the extra housing, a little bit of extra food and more housing means that we could get population 15 cities or so as an absolute standard and I'm really hoping we can do that. I also want to focus on holy sites because as we discover the Knights of Solomon we will get an ability that makes sure that any city with a shrine in can actually give us a trade route. It's a really really handy ability and one I really really like uh, but I will show you that all later on. One thing to point out about Saf's maps, they're really really cool and I often really like them. Oh has I actually given me <gasps> more yields on that wheat tile? Goodness me, that's a oh, that's an amazing start. We like that flood, that's awesome. But what you will notice about this map is that there are lots and lots of rivers on it. Getting traders down and linking my cities with roads is actually going to be an incredibly useful thing to do because otherwise moving around this map is going to be atrocious. Now there's the Mato Tipla, which is actually for me just an astrology boost, something that's quite handy really. I have however got this far and I haven't found a single tribal hut, which is a little bit worrying. There you go, era score complete. We have our unique unit. It looks to me like there are a lot more hills than there are forests, so I'm going to go for Alpine. I quite like the Alpine promotion, with scout units anyway. I find it to be quite a good upgrade. Let's go for a second scout. A two scout start. Honestly, who is this and what have they done to Ursa? Oh, there's a tribal hut. Oh, goodness me. I found I found at least one. There we go. Hang on, I'm sorry. Is that a second flood? Oh my goodness, look at that tile now. Yes, yes, what a start. I love it. I am all about that start. That is, that is awesome. Wind Dragon Clan. Shall I go and kill them? I think actually I probably want to try and get the era score if I can, so I might see what we can do. Ideally I want to go into a golden age. If I'm going for a religious start with lots of holy sites, I want to be able to turn that faith into settlers. It's often a really good thing to do. Okay, now I've got astrology, now we will get the Mecho app. Our unique improvement gives me a little bit more production, lots of housing, it's a really good tile. Now what is in the goody hut? Let's find out. The twins. Oh my lord, I like the twins. The twins are awesome. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for them. If we can get a good sort of hero start, that could be a really useful thing for us. There's God King. I'm going to go survey. As much as discipline is fun, I would quite like to see how promoted we can get our scouts. I've got two of them out already, so it's worth doing. And again, hill, hill movement I think is best. I don't see any stone around me, so rushing Stonehenge. Oh, there is stone over here, but I'd have to do quite a lot to rush it over and get it. So we're going to go for the holy site. I want to get this religion up and running as a priority. Uh, the gold I need is 320 for a settler. We'll kind of sit on this, see if we can just buy one out. But I've got decent production. I think I can rush a religion pretty effectively this game, and that's what's important. Let's get this trader going so that I can unlock them and we can start spreading my roots out. Don't forget, we get a free trader when we get to pottery. That's quite a useful thing. Oh, there was a tribal hut here this whole time. Well, yay. <laughs> you know, sometimes when they're, they're right by your city and you're like, oh, for goodness sake. Anyway, we found Hermetic Order and Void Singers, but I'm just going to wait until we can get our unique thing. Oh, and I found another scout. I found another scout in that tribal hut. That's actually pretty handy. We're going to just go to the north. I've said it, and there's some tiles just north of me that I haven't explored yet, and I just have a feeling that they're going to have tribal huts in, just after I've said that. It's just it's just the way, really, isn't it? So there is my three trader, but alas, there is nowhere to send it right now, so that's a bit useless. Oh, Half Moon Clan. Okay, there is a barb encampment right above me. That's ever so slightly worrying. I'm also going to see if I can get any horses. Now, I do have a governor. Yeah, I, as I said, I'm waiting to see if we can get Knights of Solomon. I'm going to just hold out for that one. Stonehenge already on turn 20. Wow. Okay, let's see what religion gets taken. If Feed the World gets taken, us is going to be a little bit unhappy. We found Anansi and the Sanguine Pact. Okay, we just met Kahukia. Oh, and there's the Knights of Solomon. Okay, there we go. We've unlocked them. So, if I open up with this modded secret society, I believe this is one from Fuzzle. I'll just double check. Yes, it is. Good old Fuzzle. I can't, I can't recommend Secret Societies from Fuzzle highly enough. They're all really, really good. So many good Secret Societies 
that really just changed the game up in a really nice way. But plus one great profit point per turn, plus one great general point per turn, as well as giving me Apostles gaining the Orator promotion. And cities with a shrine, um, plus one trade route capacity, if there is not already a market or a lighthouse in the city. So if I build commercial hubs or harbours, it's not going to do anything for me. You can see somebody's already getting profit points per turn. I think there's a few people have gone, yeah, look at this, 21 points and 21 points. Someone else has gone Knights of Solomon. This is the only problem. If I go for the modded secret societies, so will the AI. Let's whip out a builder and then I'll get holy sites, uh, pro uh, site projects going until we can finish. Oh, we found some horses. There are some horsey saucies. Lovely. I need to get those in quickly so that we can get a pasture in my city. There's really not many pastures and camps on this map at all. Really isn't. So my ability of getting plus one food, two pound maker per camp or pasture at the destination on trade routes. I mean, we're really going to be struggling to get many here at all. But I mean, at least we haven't gone for a map that's so, you know, focused on the Cree abilities that it seems unfair in some way. I mean, we've almost gone totally the opposite direction. Hercules. Oh my goodness, Hercules is good. Oh my lord. We, I haven't had a proper Hercules game in a long time. Might have to treat myself. He's really good because he can put down three districts for three, which could be three holy sites, could be three campuses, which I'm just rushing towards now. There's a lot of cool stuff here. And we've got a pantheon. So, Let's have a quick look. We could go for Divine Spark. Now this would let my holy sites and my campuses give me more great people. That's not a bad idea. Dance of the Aurora lets my holy sites give me extra faith for Tundra and Tundra Hells. I'm just checking to see what religions have been taken to start with. Oh, you see, I've done that thing now, unfortunately. Well, I can't check that until I pick my pantheon. That's a bit frustrating. Okay, we're gonna have to just do it based on what we see in front of us, whether or not I go for feed the world or not. What would be good for building my empire? I'm gonna build a lot of holy sites and there are so many rivers on this map. I'm actually thinking that going for something that gives me housing and immunities for being next to rivers is a really cool thing, but I've got primordial waters which is coast or lake, but I, I think the river one's been taken unbelievably. That's mad. Okay, well, there you go. That's, that's not gonna happen then. We can get plus one faith from woods. That's an interesting choice, but there's a lot of marsh around actually, a huge amount of marsh. So Lady of the Reeds and Marshes would be a good one as well. Now this would give me marsh oasis and desert floodplains. That is a marsh tile. But okay, so there is a plus two production tile already in my capital that I could work, as well as being a few other locations nearby with multiple sets of those tiles. We know that a lot of this American map has marsh on it. So that could be a good one. All the choices, I could get faith for woods. That would be a cool thing as well. I could get culture from tundra terrain. It would force me to work for tundra though, and I'm not entirely sure that would be a good thing long term. I think I'm going to try and get Hercules, and we're going to wrap it up with Divine Spark in order to pop down these holy sites quickly, and the libraries to get ourselves extra points. That could be a really good one. But no, no, I think actually no, we're going to stick to my gut, which was, oh actually no, hang on, now Sun God. Plus one food and production from farms over bonus resources. I've got this wheat and this rice and I've got a lot of other bonus resource farms. Huge amounts around. I, yeah, I, I'm going to go for this. I think this is good. Now, one religion has already been taken. This is the Stonehenge religion. They were just waiting for a pantheon, but they've gone for shrines and temples provide science equal to their intrinsic faith output. That's a really good one. But I mean, feed the world is still open. So we like that. Look at that. That is a six food, one production tile now. I like, I like what we've done. I like what we've done with the place. This is good. I might have to sacrifice my warrior here, but I can destroy the clan to give myself era score and a boost to writing, which actually is a really unfortunate boost because I'm probably going to meet somebody soon anyway. I think the Aztecs are just below me and Canada are somewhere off there. Yeah, so that's unfortunate that that horseman spawned when it did, but never mind. Here's my next farm. Bam. Six food, two production. That's a good tile. That's a very good tile. I'll just get my unique improvement down on this floodplain tile there as well. And that will make it even better. So there is writing that gives me the option to get a pretty good campus down somewhere. I like that. I'll pick up mining now. And instead of foreign trade, we're going to go for improve three tiles. I'm going to do that next turn. Switch out God King, which I no longer need. Go for um, urban planning and survey is still good because I'm, I'm doing okay against barbs, but I'm not getting as many tribal huts as I wanted to, so I'm actually going to switch to Discipline. It's going to help me take down the barbs. Oh, Hippolyta. Man, there are some good heroes this game. God, there's some good heroes. I am spoilt for choice, and that's 
a bit frustrating sometimes because it's like I want I want everything. I want all of the choices. Can I not just have all of the choices, please? Also, unfortunately, I can't put my unique improvement on floodplain. That's a bit frustrating. Never mind. I can put it over on this tile. And there's only got one charge on my builder left, so I'm gonna stick it on this tile because I need the extra housing. That plus one housing just means that my capital will grow nice and plump. And we like a plump, plump capital. Mmm. Here's my unique improvement. Bam! Four error score. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Right, let's see if we can go and take down this barb encampment to my north. I need all the error score I can muster. Oh no. Who is this on my lands? America exchanging information on capitals. I will do that just because I want to see what Washington's doing. But luckily there's a lot of space. But it's only inevitable that the Americans will encroach into our land at some point. I've got to do something about this. They actually only dislike me minus two. Unbelievably, America's playing nice in this game and I don't trust it at all. Canada. And Canada, oh no. There's another set of people on this map. Oh, terrible, they like me minus eight. Oh no, the Canadians really don't like the curry. I'll make no more judgment on that until we can, you know, just destroy them in the most friendly way we can. Oh, our map player has claimed the twins. We need to just be careful here. I'm just waiting for enough gold for a monument. Catholicism has been made and that's choral music. Oh, I've got so lucky so far. So lucky so far. But another profit has just been taken. I can do it next turn. I really, really hope we can get Feed the World. I will be so disappointed if we don't get it. What's in this goodie hut? A three builder. That's actually really handy. Let's go and get these horses. There's the prophet. There's the third religion. Oh no, it's Feed the World. It got taken literally the turn before me. Oh, well, now that's a bit frustrating, is it not? <laughs> the game was like, ooh, looks like Earth is having a lot of fun. Shall we do what we can to stop that? Uh, right, fine. You know what? I'll just make my own religion. It'll be even more fun. I love some of these symbols. They're really, really cool. I'm looking for something that kind of looks a bit like a bison, an animal. Like, I know that these are all linked to different civilizations in the game. And admittedly, I don't know enough about the actual history of these to be able to pick which sieve is related to each one. But I mean, that, that looks like the curry one or something similar. Look at that bison. It's awesome. Okay, if we can't defeat the world, what else can we do that's really fun? Something that could be awesome. Severance spirit, plus one movement to builders and settlers trained in cities following this religion. That would help me to get my improvements out a lot quicker. That's quite a nice little low key, awesome one to pick up. Plus one amenity in cities with two districts, that's quite handy a lot of the time. Fruits of labor, once we get huge, huge cities. Plus one production for each citizen following this religion, that adds up into something massive. 20 population, for instance, that's 20% extra production on a city that could be earning like 100 production. This is the one for later into the game. I'm gonna gamble on this becoming awesome late stages of the game. We'll see if that pays off. I'm also gonna pick up Crusade because losing feed the world makes me angry makes me very angry and i want to guarantee that i pick that up in a game with 16 religions it could get messy quickly this by the way guarantees me a holy uh, a golden age so that's really cool so we'll just kind of wait on this one for now i'm gonna raid this clan get the gold so that i can get myself quickly the monument here i think it's probably worth buying that it's four turns now i'm gonna buy it and then we're gonna quickly get hercules before i get the settler out this works for me i quite like that as a plan i could wait on hercules so that i can get the era score in the next stage but i don't want to risk it i would rather just have hercules you know he's too good to mess around with so there he is okay we can use that to just pop down a campus somewhere for three basically and i'm thinking this plus two that's pretty cool. That means that my holy site becomes a plus three. Gives me a little bit of extra faith. I like that is a point chopping down. I might just chop this down quickly so I don't lose the production on that tile. And here are the Aztec. My first possible ally. I'm going to be as well behaved to them as I can. Unfortunately, they like me minus 11 at the moment, but I will send them a delegation to try and see what's going on. They don't like me at the moment, but they will. I know you're void singers, but you will like me. So quickly, what we're going to do is I'm going to get another settler. Oh, we can get the Ottoman tanky. Now, oh, now that's a good, that would be a good wonder. That would give me extra there's extra science on all my marsh tiles. I do have a few of those, but I think expansion at this early stage of the game is more important. So we're gonna do this. I will use the builder to chop to get a little bit more production. And then I will switch 
to the campus. We'll go from there. We'll get Hercules to boost it. There's a little bit of extra science. Now we'll get the settler out. Now where is the settler going to go? I really want a pasture. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this ring. I'm actually going to pop the city. Is that a plains hill? No, that is a grassland hill, unfortunately. I'm actually going to settle here. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but it means that I'm next to this natural wonder and that will give me a bunch of extra age. So that's that's cool. Bunch of extra age. You know what I mean. Era score. Age of era score. Oh man, I don't know what I'm talking about. So if I'm going to go there, actually what I'll do is I'll put another city over in this direction. I just want this settler out and about if I can. Like, you come and escort that. Hercules is going to go and deal with this encampment. Sinbad. Oh man, Sinbad on this map would be amazing. Imagine sending him out into the Atlantic. That could be awesome. Here is the Golden Age and I believe the best thing for me to do would be to go for monumentality so that I can use my faith to get settlers so we can explore around the map and do exciting things. Now Hercules is just shredding these barbs. I have this settler coming down to the south but it's just being killed at the moment and it's just like oh there's so many barbs everywhere. It's like leave me alone barbs please. I can now start picking up lots of other things like little tribal huts. That's a nice chunk of faith. That's awesome. How much faith for a settler? 150. I'm gonna get that fairly soon actually. What am I actually thinking here? And this is a bit of a crazy thought, I know, but I could put a canal down on this town. Now that would link if I had a harbour down on this town, this lake to this lake. This lake could then be popped down to that one. That one could then be popped down to this one. Nope, sorry, I can't put tiles down properly, like so. And then I've got a navigable Mississippi enabled on this map could in theory then canal canal over to it. I reckon we can get our capital connected to the Pacific. It's gonna be a tricky sell but I think it's possible. Let's see if we can spring this trap. Hercules can't kill the slinger in one go but if I leave my settler the slinger will cross the river and then I'll be able to counter-attack. That's what I'm hoping. That's that's my my goal here. Go and do it. Fall for the trap. You know you want to. You know you want to. Yes. Fell across. Hercules got a bit more health and then bam I get my settler back. Captured and safe. What is my first governor? What will I do? Shall I try and claim the city-state? Laurier is in there, but I think actually Amani is always worth having out if you can get her. So I'll pop her in to Kohokia. I'll put an envoy down in that city-state and this is going to give me a lot of visibility as well as giving me good options to levy their units later into the game should Canada and America prove a bit annoying. Hint, they always do. Let's see what's in this goodie hut. 40 gold. Not a bad one. Cool, we're still finding tribal huts in lots of different places actually. I've got lots of the map to explore still, so yeah, so far this start has done well. I'm just waiting for this clan to give something that isn't a barbarian horseman. They're okay units, 20 strength I believe, relatively fast, but they don't upgrade into anything. So if you buy one, they're useless for the rest of the game, which is a little bit unfortunate. The Aztecs have changed their mind on us. Good. They realize that we have the same luxuries, aka neither of us have anything. <laughs> That's a bit of an embarrassing revelation, isn't it? It's like, oh, you have the same luxuries as I do. And it's like, wait, you've got luxuries? And he goes, oh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> I've got I've got nothing as well. So here is city number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles away from my capital. So we should be able to make these cities nice and big. We've got rid of the barb encampment. I didn't get the era score for doing that, alas. But what are you going to do? I can do, however, is put a holy site down. And I believe, yeah, this tile is a plus one. That's kind of slightly better than a lot of the other tiles. So I guess we'll go for that. So it gives me some faith. I don't know. I don't know. What a great city for districts, really. I guess, yeah, the holy site is good because at least it will give me a little bit more faith per turn, which I can use on monumentality. Yep, so I'll do it. Build a holy site district there. Good. And then switch you immediately to getting the slinger. And friendship with the Aztecs. It's done already. We have made a friend. Oh, Cahokia is now mine, by the way. So look, this has actually navigated a lot of the Mississippi for me, which is awesome. Now I can build mounds with their ability, but... I mean, I've kind of already got my own unique improvement that does something very similar, so not too worried about getting that. Now I'm going to pick up Pingala in my capital so that I can start to grow a little bit more. My scouts are still trying to defeat as many barb encampments as possible, which is proving relatively tricky. 
There is the second holy site. I need to start building some shrines now. And I realize my scout is still asleep. Now this should give me this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile. Actually, it should, it should link all of the tiles to me. Oh, this is where the Cree ability begins to get very, very fun. Gaul, hello. Honored to meet you. How on earth did you get, oh my goodness. <laughs> of course, the Atlantic is coast between it now. So we've already met Gaul. I like the idea of being friends with Gaul. That would be relatively amusing keeping out the uh, Europeans from their own lands. Let's get open borders with Canada. Can, can I come in please? There's lots of barbs and they're scaring me. Finally taking down this encampment as well. That's another three of us gore. We kind of want to go into another golden age if we can help it. It would be very handy. I don't really want to find myself being in dark to dark to dark or anything like that. There's my third city as well, settling right next to this luxury of this wander over there. So that's cool. Let's go to the holy site quickly, get that down. I'm building slingers in my cities quickly to try and get myself a little bit of defense against the barbs, which are kind of on a map this size, proving a little tricky. I'm also going to use a little bit of faith to get myself a trader. I think that's, oh, is that the best thing to do? No, I can probably build those quicker. What's better, to build a settler or a trader? Oh, it's all kind of the same, really. But I can improve builder and trader production. So let's actually build the settler out and use my faith to do traders and builds. I think that's the best thing to do. So let's get the trader there and then I'll get a builder with my faith coming up in a second. Also just got a bunch of gold which means I could now get a shrine in this city. Although, let's just think about this. Building a shrine in the city gets me another uh, trade route, but it doesn't change anything else. So no, let's get it in my capital. Better to have it in my capital. All my cities have minus one, which means they have a bit of a penalty. So I'm just gonna go to the Aztecs and buy a luxury from them. It's a little expensive though. So can I just get some gold up front from America? I can do that. Please, can I just buy it? There we go, 33 gold. It's cheaper just to buy it in one go. That means all my cities now have zero and they haven't got the loyalty or the yield penalty, which is quite a good thing. And I believe the best thing for me to do, I think this city down south is going to be quite effective. I'm going to just steal some uh, tiles. One, two, three, it would give me, and then one, two. So a few in the middle I wouldn't claim. It claims me enough, and that's a plus four root. I like that a lot, that's cool. And I've also now got another holy side. Bam, it gives me three error score for being a beautiful district. Yeah, that barb on one health just pillaged. Ugh pillaged my holy site. Get out of here, please. I don't like it. I do not consent to being pillaged like that. Please go away. One more settler. That's good. Please don't kill my trader though. Disapprove, dislike actions such as that. Come on, I'm... Oh. This is the only problem when your empire is this spread out. The barbs just get everywhere. Another outpost destroyed. Masonry boosted this time. And again, it's all the era score. We like the era score. Era score is a good thing for me. Yep, that scout pillaged my route. Ugh, that's so frustrating. It, I mean, uh, admittedly, I'd, I'd already gained all the tiles I was going to gain, but still, I don't, I just, I find that annoying. I was using that route, you know? That was mine. You have so few troops. I know, I'm trying, okay? The troops keep dying. There's so many barbs everywhere. Leave me alone, doing my best. Oh, more tribal huts around here, but there's a lot of barb archers. This is not what I wanted to see down in the south. Okay, I think getting a bit of a slinger army here is going to be quite important. Oh, nope, that's, um, this scout is now dead. It ran blindly and there's no physical way I can actually escape without the archer shooting me. So, yeah, they're dead. Oh, this is why I love scouts, even the unique Kree scouts. It doesn't matter, they all die very quickly as soon as anything difficult happens. Yep, goodbye. Goodbye, sweet prince. Dead now. Fourth city though, so we're still expanding. Even, even though it's not, not really helping me, I'm still expanding. Calvinism, America has a religion. Okay, cool, that's fine, but it's not gonna find anything fun over with me. World wonders give two immunities, two housing. No, I don't want it, don't want it. Don't approve. Zero, zero approval from Ursa. Just gonna quickly pick up another shrine. That's another trade route, but also more faith. Faith is really handy. I'd quite like to actually pick up Hercules again once we've gone through the whole shebang of, of renewing that one. Um, this barb encampment has just appeared in the total wrong place though. Don't like it being there. That's, that's not on. Classical era. Perfect. Let's go for Classical Republic. Let's get the plus one housing, plus one immunity. It's a nice boost 
for me. Let's go for Urban Planning and Builders as well as First End by Kansas 2 because I'm going to meet a bunch of city-states eventually. Um, City-state conversion is disabled unfortunately but I mean we should find a bunch in Europe once we unlock that aspect of the map. Scouts please stop running away. I don't want you to survive. You're not going to survive. I I, I forbid it. City 5, by the way, settling over towards Canada now, and I've got two turns on Hercules. <laughs> what What could I do in two turns with him? Let's send him home, and I'll send him here and see if we can kill this uh, scout. So if this scout does pillage that farm, it'll be a little annoying, but I won't worry too much because I had a nice builder popping out soon. There is my heroic relic. I I think it's worth keeping that for the faith, but we'll just double check and see what people are willing to offer for it. One, yeah, not worth selling that one right now, so that's fine. Let's go kill that scout quickly, good. Let's send the builder up to this tower to build a second improvement. My capital is now churning builders out pretty heavily in order to try, absolutely try, and get ourselves some semblance of infrastructure. Get a swordsman actually from that city. Gold is proving a bit tricky. I've got lots of internal routes and they will start to give me a little bit of gold once we get going, but like the Cree ability only gives me plus one gold for every camp or pasture. It's not quite enough. It's not quite enough. I need to send some routes over to Canada soon and just, oh, fills me with dread trading with Canada. I need them gone. I don't need them rich. Here we go, another mecho up. Nice, a bit more production in the city. It's looking good. Oh yeah, actually that is a bonus resource farm as well I can stick down. Give me another plus one food, plus one production. Good mix. Oh, there we go. There we go, these are the deals. Now, selling my heroic epic, that's going to give me so much gold. So I'm going to do it. I want to get my infrastructure up quick. I think it's the only way that we're going to rush through these stages of the game. Now, routes to my capital were giving a lot of extra food, so I might want to get those going in as many cities as I can. I do have some spare traders that I can stick up as well. Saying that, getting a builder in this city is also high priority because I want to get this horse done, this pasture done, and then I can send routes to this city as well. A lot of different competing things, all looking for my attention right now, and that's fine. We don't mind that. So let's go for earning the 30 gold, and then I can upgrade the slinger to volley. Wait for that to spawn another unit. Let's get the builder up in that direction. We've got this settler heading down to go and fill in this sort of area, but look, here is this pasture going now. Bit of extra production, some more horses to sell on the open market. A little bit of extra production and food. That's suddenly a good tile. Brilliant. There we go, that's a good route. This is to my second city. Uh, that is four food, one production, two gold. Extra gold is all good. And I believe, yep, it's gonna... Uh, no, it won't get me any more tiles, but it's making my capital grow nicely, which is good. Eight turns and nine until the Ottoman Tanki has been built, which is a little bit of a shame. I kind of want that. If I can boost that tile or boost it somehow, that would be really handy for me. Is it worth chopping down those forests on that tundra hill? I think it probably is actually. We'll go to that one. How much to buy that tile? 120. Yeah, I think that'll be the rush we need to actually get that sorted. Now here's the thing. I have six turns remaining and I've got one turn under what I need to go into a normal age. Can I hold a dark age? Is that likely? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I think the chances of me pulling that off are probably slim to none. So what we're going to do is just assume that I'm not going to do it and then we'll rush through this wonder. Let's do it. And boom, puts me to four turns. So the Etamendanki is going to be finished unless someone builds it, which is still a, you know, reasonably major possibility. This is city number six. Look at that. We're getting there. We are popping these things down. I'm also going to get a trader because I saw a route that basically takes the trader across my entire empire and you know what that means? A lot, a lot of extra tiles. Should be good. Oh, Himiko is still an option. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like that would be great if we could pull that one off. How many turns is it? 14 turns. What's my highest production city? I think it's probably that one down there. That's a 10 production. Yep, certainly is. So, I think we'd have to save up for a monument and see if we can rush Himiko. Yeah, I, I like that as an idea. That's really cool. Oh yeah, we met Norway as well. So yeah, we're gonna gonna break out of a dark age anyway. And looks like they've settled Iceland. Uh, Gaul is actually heading over to America. Oh no. 
don't you be doing that. America is our haven. We will unite. We will keep everyone out. Yeah, what did I say? Unless it gets rushed. Literally the turn after it got rushed. Never mind. What else can I do? With this production, do something fun. Settler in four turns. Actually, yeah, let's get a free city out of it. That's not a bad replica or sort of a replacement, I should say. So where is this route taking? Oh, yes. This is going to give me, right? One, two. That's two tiles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three tiles. I oh, thank you so much. That that just makes me happy. <laughs> I should make everyone happy. That's beautiful. Oh no, it's England. Oh dear, they never have very good intentions for America. I would like to go and see probably Cliffs of Dover, yes. And Sweden as well. You know what? Maybe, just maybe, we'll end up in an accidental golden age. You never know. Nope, normal age. Ignore what I was saying. And this is a good thing in terms of my faith use because I'm kind of hoping that I can collect enough faith to bring Hercules back into the game. It's uh, quite expensive to do, but it's always worth it. So Exodus of Evangelist is awesome because I haven't spread my religion to any city yet. It's been a little bit problematic. I'm just running a couple of holy site prayers to increase my faith to try and get Hercules out, but also to spread my religion a little bit. It's just speeding it up a lot more. 9.5 per turn, that city's going up. Nine per turn, the city's not getting any, nor is that one. Okay, so I do need to start sending a little bit. I just don't want to buy missionaries. That's my problem. Missionaries are just a waste of faith. What's my next uh, upgrade? Constructing Temple of Solomon, a powerful replacement to the temple. That's right. It's really good, actually. I like that building a lot. Scotland, honor to meet you. All the Mayans. Okay, uh, this is a genuinely important one because these are another sieve that I want to make friends with. They've only got one city though. They're not doing very well. Might have to just come back to that one. I'd love it if we can produce city center buildings quicker and I'd love it if ranged units had a little bit more combat strength. We'll see if either of those go through. City center and melee. Melee's all right. A lot of barbs are melee, that's the only problem, but I do have melee troops myself, so it's not the worst thing. There we go, Mayans are friends as well. Just need to find Mapoche and the Incans now, which City State was kind of doing for me, really. One more settler, huzzah. It's actually a really nice city, this one. It's got one, two, three, four, five pastures in range. This could be one to send a lot of troops to, and a lot of, sorry, trade routes, I should say. Very good. So I hired a swordsman from this barb camp, which is attacking me. It helps me just to do this, but I don't know if my trade is going to survive. It's kind of, I hope it runs away. It should be running north soon. Fingers crossed, but we'll see. Gaul has captured Amsterdam. Dear, oh dear. What's going on in Europe? Don't like it. Whatever's happening. It's very angry. Very angry. Oh no, these <laughs> rock vulture. It's <laughs> even a rock lobster. It's got a crossbow. That's not good. It's not fun at all. We don't like that. Um, I'm going to have to pull my units back and try and defend from an easier angle here. This isn't good. Every time I pick up a luxury, it sells for so much money. Trade is really, really helping this game so far. If it's Aztecs or the Mayans, I'm allowing myself to take the gold per turn because I trust that it's going to continue coming in. If it's anyone else, I'm taking the gold up front because... <sighs> Let me rephrase that. It's not that I don't trust them to declare war on me. It's that I don't trust myself to declare war on them. I'm very likely to just randomly invade someone in this game. Very likely indeed. I think settlers are good for now. Let's go for urban planning, Ilkum. These are two very good things. And kind of asteroids to get myself a little bit more gold. Probably should produce units soon. But at the moment, just building up my cities a little bit is proving quite handy yeah this trade is gonna get pillaged i can just tell yeah oh stop it this barb encampment is the worst look how tough it is a man at arms two swordsmen two crossbows i was fighting it that's the frustrating thing this promotion to men at arms it has not helped me it has not helped me or my cause all right himiko is here to make my swordsman just a little bit tougher but these barbs are proving problematic can i get them to leave my land 400 gold to bribe them. I'm beginning to think that might be worth it. I'm being honest, I'm not far off actually being able to get enough money to do that full stop. In fact, yeah, there we go, just selling open borders and things. Bribe, get out of the land, okay? Just leave me alone. And that gives me time to take Himiko all the way over to this city and send you over to Hokia. 
That gives me even more envoys. This city is my new one. Just again on the Mississippi is pretty cool. I could have settled there for a canal, but I'd rather put the canal on this tile. If it's stained it already, you know that nothing is going to invade it later. So that's all good. Water mill, granary, monument, all the things that make a city lovely. Kaguna, hello. Nice to meet you, Mr. City State. And with this iron mine, there's apprenticeship boosted, which I was just waiting to finish. Industrial zones, again, a very handy thing for me to pick up. The Dutch. now. When you lost Amsterdam, I very much expected you to be out of the game. Nope, they have this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere. Lovely. Engineering boosted. Apprenticeship. I can now put industrial zones down. Are people... How many people are getting engineer points? A few. Goodness me. I forget just how many people can pop down engineers on these huge maps. It's fine. Not a problem. Oh, I like this trade route. So look, I'm going to get two extra tiles on that bit. And then... I'll get this towel and then some towels around the back. Oh, I mean, awesome. Why that's so convoluted, I don't know, but I'll take it. It's it's brilliant. Perfect. Oh, that's George's unique unit. Oh, that's a toughie. All right, we need to run away from this. I'm probably going to lose that builder, but yeah, they're not messing around, are they? 450 to stop them from attacking me. I think I might have to end up Actually asking for a bit of peace here. See what damage they do. I've only got 13 strength on my walls, so the slinger is likely going to knock the walls down. The walls are made of paper mache. Paper mache and dreams held together with some foolish hope. Luckily, I just managed to purchase enough so that I can now bribe this city-state as well as getting myself one of the unique units. Now, these things are really cool. They're 48 strength, which is pretty awesome. They also get a bonus against anti-cavalry and they get a bonus when fighting on hill tiles. So it's basically the triple threat. Kehokia, I'm going to start getting envoys with you and 100 faith each time gives me a huge amount of joy. There we go. Emiko's charm. Lovely. That gives me the, all of the faith that I need to get Hercules and we're done. Right. Where are the district's best placed? I'm going to bring you down to this city to the south. Gee, Hercules has got 62 strength, so I can probably use him to clear out some barb camps. But first, there's a holy site there that needs finishing. I think I've got one in this city to do, and I had one in this city to do. So, get three more holy sites going. Time for a gogi. I've got so many barbs, I've got such a problem. It's, it's nasty. They can't get me in my lands, but unfortunately they can shoot me from outside of my lands, so I'm not really gaining anything by staying inside. But there is the Temple of Solomon. Now this is an amazing upgrade. A hugely useful building. Basically, it gives me 25% production towards land military units, as well as giving me gold equal to the faith adjacency of the district. And it also gives me a general point per turn. So I can actually start to hopefully get a great general. Although we're already on Renaissance here, a great general. So chances are we're probably not going to get one full stop. But you can dream, you know, you can dream. You see, I feel like this isn't part of what's going on here. I've got crossbows just stood outside my borders, killing my walls from a distance. It's like, you've been bribed. Go away. I know you're technically not in my lands, but it's the, it's the, it's the meaning behind it. You know, like it's the intention. I clearly didn't mean for you to stand there and just keep shooting me. First Temple of Solomon though. Huzzah! Oh yeah, that gives me a lot of extra faith. It gives me a lot of extra production. I can start spreading my own religion now. I'm going to get lots of Eriscore doing this. Hopefully we'll go into a golden age next time around. Holy sight, rushed. That's a plus four, so it's going to be plus eight for me. that would be worth a lot of gold once I get a temple of Solomon into this one. It's weird. As long as I stay inside my borders, I can shoot the barbs as much as I want. I'm cranking out some archers at the moment, and I intend to start cracking, uh, cranking out loads and loads of warriors. What we're going to do is potentially go to war with Canada by kind of doing a bit of a man at arms rush. With my last charge of Himiko, I'm going to just double check. Yeah, I've got so many more envoys than everybody else. We're going to quickly levy the army. Bam! I think that's one, two, three, four, five swordsmen. It's not a bad little army, actually. Maybe I'll go, I don't want to attack America just yet because America are the ones that are super tough. Just look at the continents. Yeah, they're going to get a plus five strength bonus on all of these attacks. 
I think Canada is definitely the better option for me. I have to drive them out, you know? This is all my land. I need to reclaim it. So it is turn 110. I was just going to check in with how we are doing compared to everybody else. And we're in joint last on science. Aztecs are on 27. Wow, fair play. You're doing well. Very good, strong Aztec game. So we're 10 techs behind the leaders. And in terms of America, 22 versus 17. Uh, 23 for Canada. So, okay, we're not doing too badly. I do have some campuses on the way now. Infrastructure-wise, we're getting there. It's taken me a little bit of time, but we are getting there. Look at how many units I'm cranking out there. Insane units. I've got a good economy. I'm just saving up some iron and things like that. That'll be pretty decent for me. Now, just checking this. It's actually America with the religion, not Canada. So I could spread Crusade over which I think I'm going to do. Now, don't forget, all of my apostles start with the Orator promotion. It gives them two extra charges, which is pretty cool. I've already got one uh, apostle with a, the double up of spreading two extra times and then debater. Debater means that we can go and try and remove America's religion. That's kind of what I'm going to aim to do, but we'll, we'll see about the effectiveness of that. I'm just going to use a couple of charges on my own cities on the way through. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Emir EC, Henry, Rom88, Radio Torre, and Private Selection Genoa Salami for all of your support as well as everybody that leaves comments and interacts with the channel generally. Thank you so much. See you all next time.